In his presentation today, David will be discussing the movements of the market and will also show how best to ensure your project stacks up in this challenging climate. Uh, would you please join me in welcoming David to the stage? Thanks, Warren, and thank you to all of you for being here this morning. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about sharpening construction costs, and the reason I picked this topic is because I, I think it's very relevant, um, and it's what we're doing at Mitchell Brantman every day. Um, it's, it, it's reflective of where the market is at. And when I think about the market, I think of two words, challenging and tough. The next thing I think about is financiers and what financiers need to see um, to, get, to get our projects approved. Now, a large part of the Mitchell Brantman business is working with financiers, so we're talking with them regularly. And we know from these discussions that they're looking for FISOs, uh, among other things, but a FISO that's robust and has got a return of between 18 and 20%. And that's when they know who you are. So, me as a QS and you guys as developers and builders and designers, we're actually in a difficult position. We're in a difficult position because we've got a vested interest. Um, the pressure is on us to come up with projects that work. And in doing that, our calculations can be the deciding factor on whether a pro project goes ahead or not. So the pressure is about whether we're uh, too keen, um, we, can, we can cause uh, a problem down the track, or if we're too conservative, we can be overlooking a project that should go ahead. So, what we need is precision and reliability in those calculations. Now, the only way I know that we can do that from a cost point of view is to be working with costs that are real and are up to date. And that's where we'll start today. We'll look at real project costs on actual projects and we'll start to look at some of the observations and how they fit together. I'm going to frame it with a problem. Um, and the problem is a, is a FISO for... Um, standard townhouse development, if you like, 42 townhouses located on the fringe. So we'll keep that as our reference point as we work through. The way, the way I'm going to uh, frame the discussion is, is around this FISO. So the numbers are fairly generic, um, and I've highlighted sort of the key parameters here. We've got a land cost of around about $3.8 million, probably too high. Um, for a project that's located in either in Ipswich sort of area. Construction at $1,600 a square metre, that's about what the reference guides are telling us. So there, um, if we refer to something like Rawlinson's, that's the bottom end of what it's re recommending you to use. Sales prices of $385,000 per townhouse. When that runs through a feasibility, and that, that's not what we do, we don't run feasibilities, um, that comes out to a return of 0.15%. But as a QS, what I'm interested in is what leverage can we get from costs? What do we need to do with the cost to make that FISO lift to the level that it's going to work? So if we need to get a 20% return, and assuming all the other parameters stay the same, the costs have to be at around about $1,242 a square metre. And that's the frame of our problem. We'll be looking at these costs and getting an idea of how, how can we build for that sort of rate. So the discussion, we're going to look at um, these actual costs in different types of projects. Um, they're, they're all current. They're all this year. Um, in terms of the housing prices, they're within the last three months. Some of those houses have just been completed. Um, we'll look at the trends, because once we have an understanding of where the costs are, we need to get an understanding of what might happen to them in the next 12 months. Then we're ready to look at the solution, so how to use those costs and then how do we drive efficiency in design? Because really that's what it's about. The devil's in the detail. And then just before we close, we'll look at a simple SWOT analysis. From a cost point of view, what things are on the horizon that are going to help us and what things are on the horizon that we'll need to deal with? So in terms of those project costs, I mentioned they're all recent. Um, thinking about the projects, the houses are investment type stock. The townhouses are, are, are in the level of um, uh, probably the top of the basic range, bottom of the medium sort of range, if there's such a thing. Um, the subdivision projects are in the order of 40, uh, they, they range between 30 to 40 lots in what's being turned out in the stage, and they're, and they're all in the sort of five to 600 square metre 
bracket. The apartments, I'm just looking at ones that are less than 10, uh, 10 levels. The main reason for that is there's not very much being built at the moment above it. There's not a lot of data around. So when we turn to subdivisions, um, and I'll just explain some of, the, some of the framework here. What we do as QSs is we collect information and we analyze it and we keep it as it was. We don't adjust it. So these are um, elements down the side here that we use for analyzing subdivision costs. Um, I've cut out some of the beginning ones. So I've left out design fees and headworks for the moment for the purpose of this exercise. We're looking at things like demolition, earthworks, retaining walls, roadworks, the things that change from job to job. What I'm interested in is how that cost profile compares. We're monitoring the rate per lot, which is the average of those nine projects, and we're also monitoring the rate per hectare as the average. But the average doesn't cut it. What I'm interested in is these three jobs. Now, they're not the cheapest ones, but they're near the bottom. Um, and they range from uh, $33,000 to $43,000 per lot. I'm also interested in how those costs are made up. Where, what things do we need to look at? So this job here, um, Project 3, it's got earthworks at, at a rate of $18,000 a lot, roughly. So I'm interested to know what went wrong on that job. What sort of things do we need to deal with? What did that site look, look like? When we use this data, we're picking out the projects that are flat. So we pick out the ones that we need to look at. Um, the other things that are interesting in here is these roadwork numbers for these two projects. Both of them suffered hugely um, in the, their subgrades, so there was a lot of replacement work that went on. I'm also interested in these projects um, because they include um, all of the landscaping and, and uh, electrical works. That's something that in the, in the numbers we see, sometimes we've got electrical, sometimes we haven't. So we need to be able to manipulate the numbers once we've got it. The notion is to work with real costs. Now, in developing this data, because subdivisions is really just something that's kicked off, what we were doing a lot last year, largely those projects were completing. This year, they're really only just starting in the last sort of three months that we're starting to see projects to come together. So I've spent some time with BMD as well and talking to them about what they're seeing and collating some of that information. So the observations here is we've got a range from about $30,500 a lot to $55,500 a lot. A big range, even though these projects are all comparable in their sale price, basically, in terms of their offering to the market. Um, the average per lot is $44,000 or, yeah, 44000 a lot, but the average of projects 1, 2, and 9, which is where I think we should be aiming, is around about $40,000 a lot. So that's starting to look like what's possible. When we turn to houses, um, and here, this is this. I've analysed 60 houses that have built, been, been built within the last three months, um, and I've graphed them out. I haven't gone into the detail of the elements because it's um, uh, too much detail for, for today. So we're just looking at the overall cost per square metre. I mean, because I love costs, I get off on the detail of these, but um, we're just, just talking about the overall range. What we see with those houses is an is a highest cost of 1,274 a square metre and a low price of 977. So these are real build costs, they're not estimates. A surprising range, um, but most of the data collects around this point. Um, and that's where we see this frequency. So the bulk of the prices are around about $1,046 a square metre. When I look at the cheaper end, which is the ones I'm interested in, where are the most efficient projects, they're all 25% of these projects, around about um, 15 of them, are at or below 1,021 a square metre. So when I'm thinking about the cost for a FISO, I'm thinking that a reasonable range, just off the cuff, is somewhere between 1,046 and 1,021 per square metre. We can do better than it, but that's going to be something that should be safe. Now when we look at price books, and that's where our valuers are looking. They're finding references that are far higher than that. So this is a difficulty that's in the market, is we're seeing actual costs that are far below what the reference books are telling us. In actual fact, we don't have any costs that are within that range to do with housing. So it, it's a point to, uh, to be aware of. Looking at townhouses, and here I've gone back to an elemental assessment again. Um, and you know this data here, 
Um, they're different elements. We're starting to look at things like air conditioning, structure, the things that are more common within buildings. But the idea is, is that we can plug and play with the numbers. We're looking at eight um, current projects. These have all been um, uh, either recently completed or still under construction. Um, and the range in these prices is, is again, pretty, pretty, pretty large. It sort of moves from around about 9, 9 10 a square metre up to as high as um, 1,600. And there's three projects I'm interested in. Um, these three here. Now, again, they're not the lowest ones, but they're, they're at or near the more high performance from a cost point of view. I'm also interested in how they got there. So this one, the second cheapest project, has all been achieved in the structure. So when I look at that cost data, I'm starting to ask questions of how did that guy do that? What was in this project that made that structure so efficient? Um, and starting to ask these questions. In terms of the range and, and how it refers to price books, again, we're seeing a range from 909 to 1,600 a square metre. The average is 1,309 a square metre. So already thinking about our problem, we know we can bring the costs down from 1,600 a square metre to 1,309. The next thing I'm thinking about is these three projects, one, two, and five, and they average 1,200. So I'm starting to think, not only could we bring that 1,600 down to 1,309, but it's likely that we could get it to 1,200 if we, if we concentrate on the detail. Again, looking at those reference guides, for a basic quality, it starts at 1,600 a square metre, and it's ranging up to 1725. The projects we're looking at are probably a bit above that sort of quality. When the price book information is used correctly, it doesn't, it doesn't include site works. All of the costs that we're looking at include landscaping, fencing, they're complete houses ready to move in. So it's a, a different sort of scenario. <coughs> Turning to par apartments, um, and I'll point out here, these areas, um, when we're analysing it, it's um, based on FICA, um, which is fully enclosed covered area. So you apply that to um, the total internal area of the building, excluding balconies. Um, we include car parks and those sorts of things at that same sort of rate. So the analysis that we're finding in apartments um, is, is, a, is a big range again. I've included this one over here at the end, just because it's kind of cool to look at. Um, 3,640 a square metre, it stands out like you wouldn't believe. It's, probably, it's, it's the last of the uh, prestige projects in Brisbane. Um, I've put it there just to give an idea of how, how far you can go with costs. And it starts to give an indication of, of where our market is at the moment compared to where it's been. Um, but the balance of these jobs, one to five, um, they've got some interesting things happening in their data. Here I'm more interested in what what, what problems they had. Um, this one at uh, number three, the preliminaries is very high for some reason. It, may, may, uh, it was a negotiated project. Um, in terms of the uh, project two, it had a high level of transfer flaws going on and it suffered in its structure. The internal walls in three and five, for some reason, they got too many. Um, so we're starting to look at that internal layout and how we can work with it. Um, number four is the only one that has um, incurred fire sprinklers of any significance. So it's a 10 level building. There's another one there that's about, about 10 levels, but it's managed to keep itself below its height. On, uh, on number one, it's got high electrical um, costs as well. So these are the things where I'm interested in looking at and finding out what things do we need to avoid. Because the rest of the data is um, um, pretty consistent. So the range here, we're looking at 1520 up to 3640. Um, but and the average of that being 2070. But when I'm really looking at the projects I'm interested in, the, the, the true average is 1758. And the real, the real message is in the detail and starting to pick out the different designs and how it works. For comparison to the price books, we're looking at basic quality of 1740 to 1875. So it's Kind of, it's sort of there, at least it's in the range. But the medium level, um, again, is far higher. 